John chapter 7, God's divine timetable. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret, while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. You go up to this feast, I am not yet going up to this feast, for my time has not fully come. When he had said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. John 7, 1 through 9. The central truth that dominates this whole passage is that Jesus was on a divine timetable. His life was not random, but operated according to God's sovereign and perfect timing and direction. Walking in Galilee. Chapter 6 indicates Jesus spent two days with the multitude of 20,000 people, John 6, 22. But he spent around six to seven months teaching his 12 disciples who believed in him. This phrase subtly highlights the great importance of discipleship. For Jesus concentrated great lengths of time upon training his future spiritual leaders. Verses 3 through 5 says, His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret, while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his own brothers did not believe in him. Warren Worsby, on the advice of Jesus' half-brothers, says, quote, These men certainly had the world's point of view. If you want to get a following, use your opportunities to do something spectacular. Jerusalem would be crowded with pilgrims, and this would give Jesus the ideal, quote-unquote, platform to present himself and win disciples. No doubt the brothers knew that the multitude of disciples had deserted Jesus. This was his opportunity to recoup his losses. Satan had offered a similar suggestion three years before. Jesus had already turned down the crowd's offer to make him king, John 6.15, and he was not about to yield to them in any way. Celebrities might ride to success on the applause of the crowd, but God's servants know better. By doing miracles during the feast at the official city, Jesus could muster a crowd, reveal himself as Messiah, and overcome the enemy. The suggestion, of course, come from hearts and minds blinded by unbelief. Verse 6-9, through nine, Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. You go up to this feast. I am not yet going up to this feast, for my time is not fully come. But when he said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. Jesus did not have a wristwatch, but he always knew what time it was. He was always in touch with his Father's perfect will. Note the time phrase, not yet, indicating that it will occur in accord with his Father's timetable. For believers, we too must be sensitive to God's timetable. In short, we have just this life to accomplish God's will in our life, and specifically those good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, Ephesians 2.10. So this begs the question, are you wasting your time or redeeming the time that God has allotted to you? Eternity will answer whether you did the former or the latter. Jesus said, my time. 
In this passage, the word is karyos, which means an opportunity. That is, the best time to do something. The moment when circumstances are most suitable. Let me say that again. When Jesus speaks of my time, it is the word karyos, which means an opportunity. The best time to do something. The moment when circumstances are most suitable. As Jesus obeyed his father, he lived out the truth that God's timing is an important expression of his will. Something may be in God's will, but not yet in his timing. J. Vernon McGee comments, quote, The world is hostile to Christ. The reason is that our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He turns on that light, and that light reveals everything that is wrong. It reveals sin. He condemns sin. That is the reason he is hated even today. He condemns sin by his very presence, by his very life. This raises a hostility in man because the heart of man is evil. J.C. Ryle says true Christians should remember that, like their master on this occasion, they and worldly men cannot well work and act and move together. They will often find it so. Their principles are different. Their reasons and motives of action are different. They will often find that two cannot walk together except they are agreed. One reason perhaps for our Lord not going with them was his desire to avoid being made a public show by his relatives. In conclusion, in our Lord's actions, we see a beautiful illustration of divine sovereignty and human responsibility. The Father had a plan for his Son, and nothing could spoil that plan. Jesus did not tempt the Father by rushing to the feast, nor did he lag behind when the proper time had come for him to attend the feast. It requires spiritual discernment to know God's timing. Maranatha.